What is up guys, as you can see today we're back with another Honor of Kings video and today we'll be looking at the Puppet Master and this is one of the best players on this hero again, he's really famous for his hero, a very famous streamer and um, yeah, if you guys don't know what his hero's skill are, check out one of my old videos um, just type in Puppet Master Shirko because this hero, it would take legit 20 minutes to explain just his abilities um, he has four abilities, he can summon a puppet and then he has four other abilities, so it's crazy. So, um, as I said, just check it out. Um, this guy, again, really, really famous for this hero. Uh, this hero used to be played mid lane, he even used to be able to jungle, but now he is pretty much um, often played as a side lane, because um, he still played mid lane, of course, but side lane um, for solo queue is often seen nowadays, whereas back in the days no one played side lane because he just counters um, marksmen really really hard and um, here he tried to go here he tried to go um, I guess against the Marco Polo, the Hayate um, against him in the lane but the enemies ended up lane swapping as well to counter that anyway so as I said this is really high rank gameplay too so um, this should be a really exciting game to watch. As you can see here already, this hero is insanely very well played here. He, he uses his combo, stuns the enemy, and now he uses the S2. And the S2 is kind of works like a Tulan um, S1, where if it's melee range, it's like a fan. So it does more damage if you're closer to the enemy. And... Um, he flickers right into the enemy after he uses he uses essentially S2 flicker to kill that enemy and yeah, really really well played. I guess the enemy was not expecting that high amount of damage there, getting Dove level 3, um, yeah. So, I believe this hero is one of the rare heroes who is not confirmed at all that they will release him in Arena of Valor. And as you guys know, in Arena of Valor, they like to have only three ability heroes. Um, and this hero has four, and you really can't delete any of them. Again, very well played there uh, by him again there. You can't delete any of these abilities. You can't combine any of them into one. So this hero would be really, really weird to release in Arena of Valor with three abilities. So I guess they won't even try that. Um, I might be wrong though, maybe they will find a way, hopefully. But uh, so far it is not looking like they are thinking about it. And you can see this puppet, and this puppet of course takes the form of an enemy hero, so it fools your enemies. Um, uh, basically if you're playing against this hero, you might see two Malocs on the minimap and you will know that one of them is the puppet, so you have to be careful. Of course in very high rank, it doesn't fool anybody, but in low rank, it is um, very scary to play against. Anyway, so you'll see a lot of really crazy combos, like this hero has seven button combos and stuff, and you have to hit the abilities as well, so, it, and some of them, like, the puppet can dash through the enemies and knock everyone up, and um, some of those knock-ups and stuff, they, they're really, like, thin, so, it's not really that easy to hit. So uh, yeah, you'll see this guy. I already skimmed through the video a bit. He has some insane plays this video. So uh, yeah, this should be a treat. Here he, um, his ult in the human form. Yeah, he's just way too fast. He plays this so well. The enemy Nakrov gets the jump onto him, but he just gets completely destroyed. This hero is probably one of the most unfair to play against because no matter what, you can go zero deaths every single game because he's just so safe. He has so much range. His ult is a dash. Um, his ult in human form is a dash that also um, clears off any CC and makes him invulnerable during the dash. And it's just absolutely insane. This hero, it's really hard to play and it only does a lot of damage if you get ahead early game and if you know how to farm and play well on this hero. But if you are able to do that, it's just so annoying to play against. But there's probably around 20 people in um, in the whole world who are able to do that. So that still doesn't make it uh, 
uh, fair because if you play against this guy, you will feel very, um, you will feel the hero is very unfair. But yeah, and it also got nerfed a billion times already. So right now, um, if you're not one of these top 20, you probably don't play this hero at all. That, that's the state this hero is in right now. And he's still sometimes picked in pro play. Here he misses the um, he misses his um, stun. The the puppet when it's like standing there in one place and like doing its wiggly animation, it is stunning everyone around. Uh, but it, it is very it is pretty difficult to hit that ability. So um, he just goes in here again. But it seems like it was a mistake. Yeah, he has to blow his ult and has to blow the flicker as well. See, he missed the knockups, um, he missed his combo, and then it's instantly you're served on a silver platter because this hero has way less health, if you haven't noticed yet, than other heroes to compensate for the crazy mobility, for the crazy um, outplays you can do, basically. So, yeah, they, they try to compensate a little bit, but it is still an absolutely crazy hero. We'll see if he gets some more. He's 2 0 3 right now, his team is 8 and 3. He's using his index finger sometimes here, you can already see. Um, of course, this guy, as I said, really, really high rank, like 2000 um, rank. He's one of the only ones on this hero in this rank, because as I said, this hero got nerfed. So it is not easy to get to this rank with this hero. A lot of people, a lot of players who were uh, one of the best on this hero actually quit him because he got nerfed so much. So um, him staying with him is pretty impressive. Yeah, here he can just swoop in, get some easy kills, and walk out again. He might he might die for it though. Maybe he can kill this Marco Polo. Yes, he gets the kill in the end before um, dying, so he's happy about that, I assume. The Marco Polo overextended a little bit. Wasn't really um, necessary of him to go back in there. Um, the Yao would kill him anyway. So yeah. By the way, if you want to try and look up more gameplays on this hero, uh, you see, I'll put the the name in the title as well. It's Yuango, I think, is the pronunciation. Here he's really in a pinch. Let's see if he gets out. He has the dash on his S3 as well. He still has the flicker. He has to flicker out, but he seems like, yeah, he just gets chased by the Yao. I feel like Yao is a very good counter to this hero. He can just chase you for, like, so many... Um, he has so many dashes in his kit. You, you just, even if you use all your escape tools, you can still get chased down by him. Um, also something really, something really obnoxious about this hero is this puppet. Look how much range it has. And if it dies, um, you can just recall it back with your S1. But if it dies here, he catches her beautifully. Um, recognize that she is still there, porting back. He might be able to kill this guy. No. He decides um, that he doesn't have his abilities ready, so he just backs out. As I was saying, this hero, um, the puppet has so much range, so you can provide a lot of vision to your team with this hero. This is one of the most important things about this hero, actually in the highest level of gameplay. Because as you can see here, it's like a second support, it can face check bushes and provide so much utility. Also. Um, the Puppet can auto-attack as well, so you can clear waves with it from a billion range away in your safety. You can push towers with it from a billion range away, so it is very, very versatile. That is why this hero is... that is another skill cap. It's not just clicking the buttons fast, it's also... Um, he might kill him. Nope, he does not succeed. Um, it's also the decision-making, what to do and when to do it, is just absolutely crazy. Uh, you can see his team is not doing too hot. They're feeding a little bit. He's at 5 and 2, it's 14 and 12 in his team score. Um, he ends up catching this L'Oreal though. Yep, very well played there. She did not have Purify, I guess, or she was just not uh, fast enough to use it. He is just waiting. This guy will come, he will try to kill him. And he does end up getting him beautifully played. Um, as I said, there's like five different combos of of uh, like the sequencing of the abilities. So it is really difficult to choose um, when to use what, when to use which ability. He bought some um, 
Also, this guy goes full AD, of course. This is a, this is like an attack damage mage. Um, it doesn't really do a lot of auto attack damage, but it's so much damage though. Like, he 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 deals physical damage, but he was played in the mid lane, like a physical damage mage. Um, so yeah, does he get this Alice though? I don't think so. No, he decides not to go in. Uh, he decides to go in anyway, baits the Hayate. Hayate ends up dying, I think. No, he does not end up dying. Now they have to retreat. He he's already has his finger on the flicker, in case the L'Oreal would pursue even further. 7 and 2 now. Playing really well. Playing really well. Definitely carrying. Um, ends up just recalling his puppet away. When he sees that L'Oreal approaching his real body. He's just gonna go back to get full HP. He probably wants the blue buff. Let's see if he gets it. Batman doesn't really need it. Yep, he's gonna get it. Um, the, their mid laner doesn't have mana either. He doesn't need it either. So, yeah. And you can see he has so much wave clear too. It is a really fun hero to play. He went for Shield of the Lost. Usually this hero goes full AD, but he actually went for a Shield of the Lost. And this gameplay is from August 30th. So, this is like a very new build, I guess. I guess he feels like they have too much physical damage. He doesn't, he doesn't want to just die instantly. Also, his Puppet might get the item as well. I think his Puppet inherits some of his health, at least. So whenever you buy a health item, his Puppet uh, gains more health as well, which is the important thing. Um, he has to flicker away, yeah. He might die anyway. Ah, oh, that is very unfortunate, very unfortunate. And the Yao doesn't even die for it. But if you can see, the Boatman is pushing the bot tower, so at least they get that. And they trade a 2 for 2, so they win the team fight, in my opinion. Because they do get a tower for it. And the Boatman is trying to suicide for another tower. If he gets that, that is huge. We will see if he gets it. Yep, he does, he does get it. Beautifully played. He didn't even suicide, he just kills the Alice. Very well played by Boatman. Gets a little bit too greedy, tries to clear the next wave, I think, as well. And doesn't bolt out instantly. Um, the Nakrov ends up killing him. Also, Boatman... I think not yet confirmed on the test server for Arena Valor, unfortunately. But that is a very um, exciting hero for everyone as well, I would say. But yeah. You can see here, they're, they're doing the Slayer. He does not get there in time. He tries to maybe steal it, but now he can just clean up the team fight. Um, he's waiting here. He has, he has a cooldown. Whenever you recall your puppet, you have a cooldown of around 15 seconds on it. So he, he is waiting for that. But if he, if she steps in too far, he's gonna... No, he's just gonna jump away. Um, as you can see, you can cover so much distance with, your, with all your dashes combined. Um, he went from the bush to the tri-bush there. Absolutely crazy uh, distance. 9 and 3 right now. He's approaching his full item build. He is going to finish it with is what I assume is going to be an Muramasa, judging by the component he built so far. Everyone alive on the map now. This is going to be the game deciding uh, team fight very soon. Maybe in the next 2 to 3 team fights the game is going to be decided. Um, yep, he finishes the Muramasa. He's just scouting er around with his um, puppet there. And now, as you can see, he just cleared the wave very safely with his puppet. The Batman catches out the Hayate. Let's see if he can get him. Beautifully played by Batman. They get the Hayate. He does not die for it. Deathsickle pops. He gets away. Beautifully played by Batman. And now the Nakrov is just destroying their mid laner though. If he dies for it though, it's good. Okay, it's not... I think he... No, he didn't flicker. Okay. He, he gets the Nakrov kill. He gets another two kills to his name. Um, their mid laner dies for it, but I think it's worth um, to lose your mid laner for that Nakrov. The Nakrov was very oppressive, especially to the Puppet who's carrying. Nakrov can just try to... Whenever he sees your Puppet, he can just 
dash into your base's direction and try to find your real body. So, um, and of course, your real body, you will have to retreat with uh, your puppet straight away then. The L'Oreal gets baited into using her ult, but is not in a good position here. And he just knocks them up. He plays so beautifully. Ooh, he gets the kill there. Beautifully played. Okay, so that L'Oreal is really low now. I assume he's gonna try to chase. He just absolutely outplays them. Yep, that, that is crazy. Now, th this is absolutely crazy. It knocks, the, knocks him up two times. Like, what can this Hayate do here? He gets the jump onto the puppet, but he just gets knocked up two times, gets killed through the shield. Nothing he can do there. Absolutely. Th this hero is just so crazy, but... These skill shots have to be so precise. If you guys try this hero out sometime, um, you'll see just how precise this hero has to play. To knock up, to hit a double knock up, it, it's really, really hard. I played like maybe 80 games of this hero and it's truly difficult to do. Now, this team fight was very even again, so this, the game just gets extended another time. Um, are they doing the dragon? They are not. This is good for them. Um, in this game, Dragon gives you a huge attack damage buff, AP buff, I think, as well. It just boosts your stats, so it is really, really important to get. So he's gonna try to steal it here. He kills the Nacroft, steals the... Um, they get the Dragon as well. Absolutely beautifully played. He just goes in very deep, and the Nacroft even uses his ult to block the CC, but the damage is just too high, and um, they get the Nacroft kill. Now, it is a 5v4, I assume they should be able to close this out now. He goes very deep again, he has to ult out here, um, but it is fine, he poked 3 people to like half HP. The, the boatman playing really well as well, noticing that he can just clean up this team fight. Goes in really deep, kills the um, Alice and now I assume... She is almost gonna die. He tries to kill her with the S2 flicker again, as you can see here. S2 flickers in just slightly out of range. I believe that would have killed her. The recording lags a little bit, but it is fine. And now it seems like the enemies are able to defend half HP. Now he might have, um, instead of going for a L'Oreal, he might have just been able to kill the Nexus by attacking it. So that might be a mistake. Now the enemies seem to get Slayer. They're already on it. I don't think they will reach it in time. It should be gone very soon, unless he can steal it. No, it is still full HP. Okay, my bad. I guess the enemies didn't commit. Um, because they were in that position for like... <laughs> he... <laughs> yeah, okay, now, now, okay. Okay, he, he tried. This is insane. He uses his ult. He uses his ult, and his ult makes him invulnerable for like, I don't know, one second, and it makes him vanish off the map. And he just casually opens his shop, sells an item, and buys the revive, um, the Blade of Eternity. While he's reviving Blade of Eternity, he buys the Death Sigil, sells the Blade of Eternity for it. He tried his best here. He really deserved to get those kills um, with that insane play, but he was not able to, unfortunately. Now, the enemies did not get Slayer, though, yet. So, it is not the end of the world. This this Chognar will die, I think. If she can clear out the wave, at least, it's kind of worth. I think she did. So, it is kind of worth, because the enemies cannot push now. But, um, I would still say it's pretty bad, because the his teammates are reviving in, like, 10 seconds. And he's reviving in, like, 40 seconds now. So, it, it just... It just desyncs the revival times, so now it's just really awkward. It's gonna be a 4v5 on the map for another 5 seconds now. Uh, they got Slayer. He is just trying to clear out those waves. Um, the Nakrov is bottom. He's The only person he has to look out for right now is Nakrov. Yao doesn't deal that much damage in this state of the game this late. Especially because he has that Shield of the Lost, of course. So, um, he has some HP to play around with, but the Nakrov can still absolutely uh, destroy him. He flickers away, he's, he's playing it so well, he's just staying so safe. 
in these team fights. He instantly realized. I thought he can keep going there, but he instantly realized the team fight is lost and instantly flickers away. He's just trying to clear out. Beautifully gets the um, blade of eternity by the Hayate. That is on cooldown now. He instantly knew that Hayate would um, walk that way through the fog of war. Really, truly beautiful performance. But we'll see if he's able to win. This is looking really grim right now. Oh my Jesus Christ. Now, these plays are just absolutely crazy, man. Like, if you, for the people who tried this hero, they, they know how hard this is. He's not just pressing random buttons. He has eight buttons and he's pressing them at the perfect times. I feel like they will lose. There doesn't seem to be much to do. The, the minions are cleared at least. Maybe they won't lose. Yao is trying to end, but there's no way. Yao is just gonna die here. Loses Blade of Eternity on the in the way uh, during the process as well, and dies for it. Four people dead now. Now they should be able to end because of his heroic play at his um, Nexus. They don't have minion waves though. Hayate is respawning in five seconds. But we'll see if Hayate and Nakrov can defend alone. He's just trying to clear the waves. Um, so the Nakrov cannot try to backdoor while they are trying to push. Now the waves are cleared. Now they should be fine. He is pre-ordering the Blade of Eternity. Again, a beautiful play there by Batman and um, Boatman. They get the remaining two kills and now it's GG. The enemy is just messed up. They might have been able to clear the wave together, but... And you can see the Alice even respawned, but they just weren't... Um, they just got caught by the Boatman. As you can see, almost 2k rating. He has like 10,000 mastery points on this hero. And we will see his damage dealt. It should be pretty high. 16 kills, 36% um, damage dealt. Really, really well played. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this as much as I did. And um, Let me know what other heroes you want to see in Honor of Kings. If you have any suggestions, I would like to know them. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like and I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out, boys. Bye-bye.